In this video of csharp.net, we are going to cover multi-threading. So far in the applications which we have created in csharp were th single-threaded by default. That means it has a same flow of control that starts from the beginning till the end. But if you want to go through multiple things or multiple tasks concurrently, you can achieve these things with multi-threading itself. So here, we will see like how we can create multiple threads as each thread has its own unique flow of control. That's why in the single threaded application, the flow of control is similar. But to do the things concurrently, we can go for the multi-threading. It will also enhance your CPU time. Let's take an example. If there are two threads and one thread is stuck in some task which is taking some time, so meanwhile, rather than CPU will be waiting for that, CPU will start working with the other thread and as soon as the thread 1 is back, it will again come to it and start processing. So it will definitely enhance your performance of the application as well. Whenever you want to implement multi-threading in your C-sharp programming, you can go for system.threading namespace which will give you the proper classes using which you can achieve multi-threading. So let's see it practically how we can do that. So now before getting started with the threading implementation, let's first check how a normal programming looks like. We have already done a lot of programming, but just for a quick reference, you can see here, like first of all, I have created a main method inside which I have just passed a message called program ended. And after that, I have made a method called method. All right, which is having a loop inside, which is running for 10 times. Now, if I will execute this method, so obviously it will execute this loop first. And once it is done, like a normal call stack, it will be popped out from the met from the call stack and then this main method will execute means this particular line will be printed as here you can see all right but now it's a very normal programming if i want to invoke the same method through a thread so what can i do is i can simply take a thread class from system.threading namespace which i have already added and here i will say thread1 is equal to new thread all right now when I will create a thread, it will take care of some particular task. It will take care of some functionality. So I must pass some function reference to this particular thread. So that as soon as I will start with this thread, that functionality will begin. So here, what I can do, I can use a delegate right here called thread start, using which I can pass the reference of any method who's having a zero parameter and returning a void since we know the signature of delegate and method must be same. So here I will pass the name of this method since it is static I don't need to create the instance. And now if I will execute it you will not find that loop anywhere. Why? Because I just assigned this functionality to this thread but I haven't started. To start that what I'll have to do I'll have to call this thread dot start. It will schedule the execution of this particular thread. So now when I will execute this, you can see like I am getting this loop here. But if I'll execute it again, we can notice like program ended. This particular message is printed before this loop, right? Because now it is not a single threaded application. It is a multi-threaded. Apart from this thread, we have a single thread called main thread in our C sharp program, which takes care of the normal execution. So now we can consider like in my program, there are two threads, thread one, who's taking care of this particular task and main thread who's taking care of anything else and anything else is only this thing. All right. So now I have two thread. So basically it is all depend on the processor. Like it may be considered like this is the only line which main thread needs to print. Once it is done, the, we can directly focus, we can majorly focus on this thread one, which will take care of the execution of this methodology. Now, let's do one thing. Let's replace this particular line with a loop again. So as you can see, I'm again running a loop from one to 10. And here I'll print a message 
like main i. All right, and let's re-execute this one. So here you will notice, like first of all, we started with the main method. It executes till seven. Then we went for the method, which is from thread one. It executed completely, and again this one runs over here. All right. If I will execute this again, again very different execution. Now again, maybe it's not fixed at all. All right. Basically, we will implement the multi-threading in an application where I want multiple processes to run concurrently. So let's remove this condition part so can we can get a better idea about it. All right. So now this both the loops will go infinite times. And you see, uh, in a slow way, you can notice main and i both are running here. So basically, what is there? Uh, the logic is like multiple tasks are running parallelly, and now in that speed, you will not be able to judge like which particular loop is first and second. All right. So because both will be concurrent. Initially, I, it was just for 10 times. That's why the output was not that clear. But when it is running infinite times, you can see both are running very fast, and we cannot analyze that which is running in what sequence. All right. For me, both the tasks are running almost concurrently. All right. Now, uh, apart from that, if I want to put some more things, like let's put multiple threads here. So as you can see here. Now I have taken two instances of thread, that is thread one and thread two, and now when I am executing this thread one dot start, thread two dot start, we have both the methods here, which is which whose reference has been taken already, like method one and method two, and both definitions are same. So let's execute this, and again as previous, you can see uh, everything is running well, and method one, method two, both are running in a very good speed, so that we again cannot analyze. Now. You can put some more functionalities here. For example, if you want to terminate a particular thread at a particular position. For example, I want like when i is equal to 500, I want this task to be suspended. So what I can do is like since this particular thread is a local instance inside the main and it cannot be accessed in the another method. So what I can do to access that one, I can say thread dot current thread dot and whatever task you want to do. All right. Like here, I want to abort this one. So I can simply call abort. That means now this thread is dead and is not alive longer. All right. So let's execute this one. And you see. After a particular number, only method two now is running. All right, let me execute it till uh, some particular numbers for a better result or better understanding. So as you can see, now I executed this loop for the hundred times, and as soon as the i value is fifty, I want this thread to be dead. All right. So now you see method two, the last value which is being printed by method one is forty-nine because as soon as it reached fifty before printing the value, I aborted that one. All right, so this is how you can terminate a loop permanently. But if you want to give up some duration pause to a particular process, that can also be done by thread dot sleep method. This thread dot sleep will actually pause the execution for some number of milliseconds. Let's say 1,000 milliseconds. That is one second. All right. So if I'll execute it. You will see after a bit pause. Let me give a pause for a longer duration so that it would be easily reflected. So let's pause it for three seconds. So you see after a pause, again this method one started working, and later it started with 50 because it was paused when the value of method one's i is 49. All right. So meanwhile, processor dedicatedly started working with this method two since. Nothing was there left for the processor. So this is how you can start with some basic operations. Now, again, if you want to prioritize the, your threads, you can do that as well. Like here, you can see thread one dot priority is the property, where you can set the thread priority, which is normal by default. It starts with below normal, 
then normal sorry it starts with lowest then below normal normal above normal and then highest so as per your requirement you can set the priority so that it would be started and finished before then the other threads now if you want to put your thread as a background thread so that even if your program is terminated the background activity should keep running on so you can do that as well by setting the property is background is equal to true which is by default false all right so these are some basic examples start using which you can start working with the simple implementation of threading